In our last lesson, we contextualized one half of Mestizaje, the Castilians, aka the Spanish, before their arrival in the Americas. Now, let's investigate the other half, El Indio and his societies. During early encounters, the peoples of the Americas and their lifestyles were translated, reinterpreted, and recontextualized so as to make them more understandable for the European imagination. These stereotypes have prospered since the mythologized encounter back in 1492, and they still influence how we visualize indigenous histories. To deconstruct the mestizaje formula, we must turn our attention to how early European chroniclers established their regional worldview as the universal way of understanding the world when describing the lands and peoples they encountered, altering and silencing pre-Columbian voices along the way. But why were native perspectives undermined in these early colonial encounters? How did a European understanding of the world determine power relations? And how did all the peoples of the Americas come to be called Indios? Not such a new world after all. Qué bonito canta. Gracias. So, <laughs> when thinking of El Indio and his societies, we tend to picture the Mexica, better known as the Aztecs of Tenochtitlan or modern day Mexico City, the Maya in what is now Central America, and the Inca in modern day Cusco, Peru. All indigenous empires defeated in conflicts that were mythologized even as they were happening. I mean, Cities made entirely out of gold? Shiny! However, to paint a more complete image of El Indio, we must look beyond these recognizable societies. By being precise observers of nature and the cosmos, early humans were able to adapt to diverse environments and populate every habitable continent. In this light, all the peoples of the Americas are the descendants of those humans who venture the furthest, becoming the first to quote-unquote discover this land. I finally, this issue has been set away. Spreading throughout the length of the continents, their ancestors further adapted to new environments. From their continued observations of natural patterns soon emerged a wide array of epistemologies. Episte, what did you call me? Well, epistemologies are the systems of knowledge present in each culture to make sense of the world. Ah, so in other words, each indigenous culture develop a different way to see, understand and explain the world around them. Their conception of the land was closely tied to how they experience, transverse, and related to local plants, animals, and terrain. They didn't develop the global geographical idea of land the Spanish would later bring. While the Castilians saw a wild, savage, and exploitable paradise, indigenous peoples recognized an ancient land where nature had evolved and flourished cyclically for millennia. Curiously, when the Castilians arrived, they would consider the Americas, quite inaccurately, to be a new world, in spite of the fact that parts of North America are some of the oldest exposed terrains on the world. Que desorden. Merely gazing at their possessed territories allowed the Spanish, and later the Europeans, to center themselves in their increasingly colonized world. The peoples of the Americas instead foster regional relationships with the land, integrating their societies to its particular cycles. And like this, generation after generation of tribes, nations, and empires rose, fell, and recover alongside each other, but not without conflict, war, or unfair social hierarchies, but in circumstances that allow their cultures, religions, and beliefs to exist unquestioned. The validity of native epistemologies and lifestyles was dismissed the moment Europeans arrived in the Americas. The first in a long line of future Castilian and Portuguese invaders Columbus utilized writing to describe a part of the world previously unknown to Europe. Having sailed all the way around the world, he couldn't simply write, it's just like Spain. Instead, he had to describe a plentiful land inhabited by passive peoples to convince the Catholic monarchs to keep investing in his enterprise. Let's justify colonization real quick. Ay, que exotico. A revealing attitude frames Columbus's journal following his so-called discovery. 
disappointment. Wah, wah, wah. Where he expected to find the big cities and busy ports of the South China Sea, famously described by Marco Polo 200 years before, Columbus instead found a chain of islands filled with plants and animals he had never seen or read about before. Through his writings, that fool tried to reconcile the expectations of his trip with the reality that presented itself. A perceived lack of civilization, cities, and clothings was the evidence he needed to decide these peoples were nothing. A blank slate on which the Catholic faith and European civilization had still to be inscribed. Through this conclusion, all indigenous identities were reduced into a single invented label, el indio. No te digo que desorden. Sociologist Ramon Grosfuguel contextualizes this moment. Columbus thought he had arrived in India, leading to the use of the term Indian to describe the populations he encountered. Ah. This was a Eurocentric geographical mistake that funneled the diversity present in the Americas into a single denomination that made all of these different peoples the same in the eyes of the Europeans. When he met a local cacique, Columbus wrote, he and his advisors were very sad because they could not understand me, nor I them. Nevertheless, I understood him to say that if I wanted anything from there, the whole island was at my disposal. Wow. Talk about columbusing. In a passage that seems to come from a medieval story, Columbus wrote about the Caribs, the inhabitants of other islands whom, he understands, were monstrous with only one eye, dog noses, and who ate human flesh. Que tonto. Keep in mind, these conversations took place in a language of which he had no prior knowledge, and at best, maybe only six weeks practice in trying to understand. Before actually meeting any of these supposed cannibales, he decided it was best to just return to Spain, leaving the island behind unexplored. But merely writing about the Caribs was enough to establish a powerful binary that determined unequal and unfair Castilian native relations. The invention of the printing press would accelerate the spread of information in the early modern period. In contrast to handwritten medieval manuscripts, the printed word would be granted an undeniable authority, one that guaranteed each page printed was exactly the same. Printed books came to symbolize the entirety of European knowledge, accessible to those who could read, write, and buy. Although it is known Columbus never realized he was in another continent, the power of his writings cannot be underestimated. His writings would be translated and published throughout Europe, feeding the imagination of future explorers in the Americas. In the letter written on his return journey, Columbus justified the colonization of lands accidentally encountered by telling the Catholic monarchs there's plenty of wooden land to chop down and plenty of people waiting to be converted into loyal subjects. This binary understanding of indigeneity further defined native peoples as either novel savages to be controlled or barbarians to be exterminated. Indigenous people who welcomed and traded with the Castilians were deemed as passive, innocent, and unsuspecting Arawaks. On the other hand, any who demonstrated a capacity for resistance, rejecting the newcomers, were deemed more like cannibals. Native resistance to colonization, and most importantly, to Christianization, became an initial signifier to their supposed barbarian and savage ways. From this point onward, natives' willingness to convert to the invaders' religion will determine whether Castilians saw them as redeemable noble savages who could one day be integrated into Catholic society, and with a little bit of luck, the opportunity to better their race by intermixing with white Europeans. Hashtag Mestizos! All this kickstarted a colonization movement that resulted in the exploitation of both human and natural resources, leading in a very short time to the total destruction of a whole way of life in the Caribbean and beyond. But as we'll find out in our next visual voyage, the images that fill printed chronicles, books and maps visualize America exotic, naked, and most importantly, idolatrous. 
Be sure to subscribe to our channel to see how the history of mestizaje slowly unveils through our unsettling journeys.